friends welcome back um we have uh, started talking about the iot related architecture um we have uh, demonstrated certain uh, demos also certain uh, practical applications as well in the past now it's time for us to understand the infrastructure and the related protocols which are involved in getting an iot application built so my plan is to uh, talk about the infrastructure protocol first followed by identification protocols followed by transport followed by discovery and then data protocols and then device management protocols so all these are uh, many protocols available in the market many protocols are being used there for a long time but i'm going to pick up one or two out of it and then i will uh, let you know the usage of it because these are uh, very very useful and uh, without this fundamental knowledge i don't think we can uh, build any application uh, with this chapter we will get a complete understanding from the protocol aspect of it next chapter i'm going to talk about cloud and cloud interfacing related stuff uh which will uh, be very useful for you guys to get a complete view of what is iot so let's first talk about infrastructure protocols the first one i'm going to take is ipv ipv4 what is ip an ip is internet protocol what is it used for it is used to identify a node in a connected network that's it i'm going to identify a node the node can be a printer the node can be a scanner the node can be a computer the node can be a mobile phone i am going to identify any of these things please recollect the term the things it is one of the things that is need to be identified that is needed to be identified and that identification is done through the ip address so this ipv4 is the earliest of ips i should say uh, there are other ip versions which were available before it also ip1 ip2 ip3 were available but they were meant for research purposes and they didn't come out on the market actually so ipv4 is the first version that came out in the market and that sustained in the market for a long long time ipv4 it has got four bytes as you all know uh, it is normally represented as a dot b dot c dot d and the representation can be in decimal the representation can be in 8421 format the representation can be also in binary what do you mean by this sir i'm going to quickly go through this 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 220 to represent this in binary i need to first write 128 64 32 16 8 421 this is an 8 8 bit one byte this is a byte this is a byte so i am writing it this way now for uh, me to get the 10 i need to add 8 plus 2 so 1 1 here for me to get the 10 again 8 plus 2 for me to get 220 i need to add 128 plus 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 this is the way i mark once the rest of the places will be zero so ip address can be represented as a binary uh, or ip address can be represented as a decimal one that's up to you now there are five classes of ip addresses available class a class b class c d and e this is with respect to version 4 only i'm going to talk about ip version 6 sometime later so let's not confuse it right now it is just version 4 we have got five classes of ip addresses a b c d and e what is a all about whenever you see the first bit of the ip address first bit of the ip address zero you can conclude it as class a whenever you see the first two bits as 10 you can conclude it as class b whenever you see the first three bits as 110 it's class c 1110 class d 11110 class e that's all this is the simplest way you can identify the uh, ip address class you need not remember anything else just see the first bit tell that which class does it belong to and in the class a uh, what is it meant for class a is meant for a very huge network uh, what do you mean by that class a there, there is a range for each and every class available the class a we have the range from 0 to 126 which means the first number uh, 10.10.10.120 10.150 something we have seen right in that the first number the first number whatever we are talking about will be within 126 and in this we will have um, first byte you can see that i am i am circling it the first byte is called as the network id the last three bytes is referred to be the host id 24 bits represent the host id and uh, and seven bits the first bit you will have to ignore the seven bits represents the network id so what do you mean by that sir uh, how, how does it really matter now we will have that 2 to the power of 24 with this class we will have 2 to the power of 
ट्वेंटी फोर मैनस टू ईपी अड्रस अवेलबल पर् नेवर्क ओके वाट मीन बै दट सर ट्वेंटी फोर बिट्स आर अवेलबल हियर सो वाट इस टू द पवर आफ ट्वेंटी फोर इट विल बी क्लोज टू सिक्सटी मिलियन समथिंग दो हियर इज देर सिक्सटी मिलियन टू सेवेंटी सेवन टू वन फोर मैनस टू इज इंपार्टेंट हियर सो वाट इज दिस मैनस टू सर ई कैनाट यूज द फर्स्ट ऐडी ई कैनाट यूज द लास्ट ऐडी द फर्स्ट ऐडी इज मेन्ट फॉर नेटवर्क ऐडेंटिफिकेशन द लास्ट ऐडी इज मेन्ट फॉर ब्रॉडकास्टिंग सो ई कैंट यूज दट ऐडी सो पर् नेटवर्क ई कैन गो हेड वित् वन सिक्स टू सेवन सेवन टू वन फोर नंबर ऑफ होस्ट ई मीन नंबर ऑफ नोट्स विच कैन बी कनेक्टेड इन द नेटवर्क ईज वन सिक्स टू सेवन सेवन टू वन फोर हाउ मेनी नेटवर्क पासीबल सर टू टू द पवर आफ सेवन मैनस टू सो वन ट्वेंटी सिक्स नेटवर्क पासीबल वै टू टू द पवर आफ सेवन सर बिकॉज वी हेव गाट सेवन बिट्स एस नेट ईडी वी कैन मेक इट पासीबल दिस इज क्लास ये एंड दर इज वन मोर ईडी विच इज लेफ्ट आउट विच वी हेव नॉट डिस्कस्ड वन ट्वेंटी सेवन डॉट जीरो डॉट जीरो डॉट वन वाट इस इट कॉल्ड एस इट इज कॉल्ड एस लू बैक अड्रस टू टेस्ट द कनेक्टिविटी टू डू द डबल शूटिंग वी कैन यूज दिस लू बैक अड्रस एंड पिंग वन ट्वेंटी सेवन डॉट जीरो डॉट जीरो डॉट वन विल सेंड पैकेज टू द इथरनेट कार्ड इट सेल्फ एंड इट विल टेल यू द इथरनेट कार्ड इज फंक्शन आर नॉट सो क्लास ए इज फॉर अ वेरी ह्यूज नेटवर्क वेर यू कैन सी दट पर् नेटवर्क वील हेव सिक्सटी मिलियन लाइफ एड्रस एंड सच अ ह्यूज नेटवर्क कमिंग टू द क्लास बी ई विल हेव फर्स्ट टू बैट्स set aside for network and the second uh, two bytes rest of the two bytes set aside for host id so what do you mean by that host id 16 bits for host id and 14 bits for net id first two bits should be 10 so how many networks we will have we will have 2 to the power of 14 16 3 8 networks is possible 2 to the power of 16 minus 2 655 34 This is this many six five five three four IP addresses possible per network. So this is meant for a medium scale network, and the number starts from one twenty eight and it goes till one ninety one. The first bit, first byte will represent one ninety eight to one ninety one. So uh, in the first case, in the class A, it is from zero to one twenty six. In the class B, it is from one twenty eight to one ninety one. And the class C, I'm going to go to it now. Next, the class C is going to have just two to the power of eight minus two because you can see that we have got only eight bits set aside for the second half, and two to the power of eight minus two is two fifty six minus two, which is two fifty four machines per network, and we will have so many networks available here because twenty one bits are set aside for network ID. Two to the power of twenty one is what we are going to have, and it's very very. It's, it's very very evident that this is this is going to be used for a very small networks. So class A, class B, class C. We have got class A for the most uh, very huge network, a very high, very big network where we have lot of machines connected, lot of nodes connected. Class B for a normal scale network, class C for a smaller network. And class D and E. Class D, if you see that first four bits, one 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 zero is there. We can assume that it is used for class D and it is for multicasting. The range is from 224 to 239. So 0 to 127, 128 to 191, 192 to 223, and uh, 224 to 239 is the class D one. And class E is used for military and uh, research purposes. It goes with 11110. The first five bits when it is 1111 and zero, we can identify it rightly as class E. That's it. This is about the classes of the IP address. And now, when you come with the protocol packet format, I mean, this is called as the format of IP address. We have got um, 32 bits, as I told you. 32 bits makes IPv4 totally. Now, what is the first block? The first block is called IP version number. In this block, it will tell you which version of IP we are using. So it will normally be 0100, which is nothing but 8421. We are putting 0100, which means that you are representing four. So this column will always have zero one zero zero. Now next column, internet header length. What do you mean by the header length? Sir? Simple. We have thirty-two bit words here, so it should always be. I mean, the length of the internet protocol is thirty-two bit here. That that goes there actually. So we have thirty-two bit words, which and this points to the beginning of the data. So um, the correct value is two to the power of five makes you thirty-two. Two to the power of five gets you thirty-two. So it should have zero one zero one. What do you mean by zero one zero one? In eight four two one, eight four two one zero one zero one. If I put 
4 plus 2 becomes 5. So this column should always have 5, which is nothing but 2 to the power of 5, which gives you 32. Then type of service. This is very important. Type of service. The type of service is an 8 bit 8 bit field. This talks about the quality of service. This talks about the delay. This also indicates the precedence. So many things. This particular field. This is very important. This particular field talks about so many fields. Now we can see that it's a 8 bit field which is connected as 0 to 2 with precedence, delay for third bit, throughput for the fourth bit, reliability for the fifth bit, 6 to 8 not used. Now when you come here, the precedence can be set with 0 0 0 0 0 1 up to 1 1 1 we can set all these are the precedent options it can be immediate it can be flash it can be critical it can be internet or control it can be all these options it can be any one of these options which should be filled here that talks about precedence and second one delay the delay is nothing but the fourth bit of this entire format 0 1 2 is over here which means three bits are over here the fourth bit is here which is actually marked as three because it starts from zero what is it if it is zero it is a normal delay if it is one it is a lower delay so this talks about quality of service that's very important now next column is next 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 lot is throughput if it is zero it indicates normal delay if it is one if in, it indicates higher throughput it's very important next column is reliability zero indicates normal reliability one indicates higher reliability sir what do you mean by this sir what are all this so when some customer has to be uh, paid with higher attention, higher quality of service, for example, you are a customer who are paying a heavy uh, amount of money for your subscription. In that case, you should be given a uh, higher reliability. Now again, uh, we have seen about the reliability, we have seen about the throughput, all these are all the parameters that can help you in getting a uh, better quality of service. Now the next column that we need to understand is, you can see that from here it is total length the total length is the next one that you need to see followed by identification what is total length this is a 16 bit field you can see that here very clearly it has got 16 bits totally out of the 32 bits which defines the length of the ipv4 datagram we should not call it a packet now it is a datagram so we can have 2 to the power of 16 which means 65535 which is 0 to 65535 uh, 2 to the power of 16 65536 is the maximum length of the IP datagram that we can use. Okay, so this is about the total length. Now, identification. What is identification? This is uh, used by the sender. The sender is helping you with the identification details with the 16 bit field. It is helping you in organizing the data. If the data is so big that it cannot be sent as one huge packet, one huge uh, one huge stuff it has to be broken into multiple smaller child packets and to identify all of them as in from where it is coming whose child it is how to connect all the packets this identification field is used okay so i am sending you a huge message i need to make sure that i am informing you that i am sending it in fragments i am sending you five fragments i am sending you six fragments and all those belong to one particular mother packet one particular parent packet is what we are trying to establish through this identification now we have flags field here this flag field is just three bits and uh, this flag can be uh, set or reset the um, we, what do you mean by this actually um, the it is it is a very simple field which talks which has three uh, sub fields inside one is unused second one is drone fragment third one is more fragments zero one two so the first field is always zero so don't worry about this this field is unused this is always zero and the second field is called as don't fragment and the third field is uh, called as more fragments a don't fragment is set okay the don't fragment is set to zero if ip datagram can be fragmented and if it is set to one it cannot be fragmented which means when i make it one here the pa the, the datagram cannot be fragmented and next bit which is nothing but more fragments here uh, is set if it is to indicate that more fragments are going to come on the way which means this is not the end of it so this flag field will let me know that if there are more fragments yes in case if there are more fragments they are also intimated to you and do you want to fragment it if you set it as don't fragmented it will not be fragmented if it is set it as zero it can be fragmented as simple as that now uh, time to leave uh, time to leave is nothing but how long an ip datagram should survive how long an IP datagram should be available? 
it is coming in the network it is floating in the network how long should it be there alive in the network so it is very important point it is called as ttl in the technical term this is an interview question as well so what is ttl they may ask you ttl is time to leave next column is protocol so you can see that here we have got protocol what is protocol sir ip is not an independent uh, protocol ip needs support from lot of other protocols like icmp igmp tcp or udp we need to mention that in this particular field with the value as 0001 02 0304 something like that and we have got the values here very clearly 01 represents icmp 02 represents im igmp likewise we have got the options available here and these are all called as a support protocols whenever we are going to use this protocols that has to be mentioned very clearly in the header format i mean the packet format now header checksum the checksum is normally used to uh, make sure that uh, there is uh, no error in the transmission i am sending you a packet are you receiving it intact okay so that is the way checksum is normally used i am sending you a packet i am sending you a, a set of packets are you receiving it right are there any corruption in the transmission are there any drop in the transmission that is carried out through the checksum field source address we know what is it destination address we know what is it source address is the place from where the datagram the source is originated i mean the uh, datagram is originated the destination address is where it should go options there are so many options available for testing and debugging that itself will uh, take a lot of time for us to understand and go further but at this level it is enough you if you understand there is something called as options and that option field is mentioned here and finally we have got padding what is padding padding is nothing but the packet which will come could be variable in length the, the variable packets cannot be handled it has to be multiples of 32 so it has to be multiples of 32 bits so we have a provision to pad as zeros number of zeros before the a uh, datagram packet so that it can be multiples of 32 so we have the facility to do that as well and before we go to ipv6 in my next session we can also answer couple of questions how can someone get to know the mac address of a windows machine uh, they can get the mac address of the windows machine using the command get mac get mac how can someone get to know the details of ip addresses configured in the windows machine it's simple ip config ip config will get you the details how can you get the uh, details of ip addresses in a linux machine if config hyphen a so these are all simple questions that may help you in the interview i'll come back to you with the uh, ipv6 details in the next session shortly thank you very much for following me i'll come back to you again thank you